Quick feet driving forward. 30 seconds to go. Let's get there. Hey boy. Good work. Good, 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 excellent. He got just about as far as we've ever seen someone get on that last one, so you know, dynamite workout. We're here with Alex Masai uh, at Lake Mary on Saturday, what is it, March 25th. How are you doing today? Good man, um, it's a nice day, a nice day you out and uh, ready to go. So you kind of have an interesting story. You're coming from Kenya, right? Yeah. Uh, and you didn't run till college? Oh yeah, I just played at the sports uh, in high school, uh, mostly uh, handball and you know soccer. But uh, after high school, that's when I started, you know, at least taking running seriously. What kind of made you start running? I know you have a two-time Olympic brother and a sister who's an Olympic medalist. Did they yeah. kind of have an influence on that? Yeah, of course. Uh, I knew uh, from the start, I knew uh, I come from a running background. So it's just about time when to start it. But uh, they have always influenced my decisions. And I think me starting running was because the success they have done. and. Uh, yeah, like I just knew, uh, at least I have something, you know, some talent in me and I was like, let me start and explore this talent just because they have done it at the highest level and uh, I'm trying to just do what they did. What's been kind of like the hardest part coming from college to now racing professionally? I don't, uh, I'm still new in this field yet, but I think it's, it's the competition, of course. The competition gets here stiff and, you know, you're always racing the best runners around the globe. Every time you go on a race, you always get some, you know, quality runners, you know, compared to college. The only time I, you know, you get serious competition is national level or something. So here, from the start to finish, you always have competitive runners. It doesn't look like it's bothered you too much, though, as your first two races, you had personal best in 3K and 5K and you set team records. How, uh, how excited are you to kind of keep training with NAZ? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, of course, it's a good start. You know, every time uh, me and my coach always say there's no good thing as PBs, you know, and uh, I think the first few two races were nice. You know, um, it's a you know foundation for us and we're building up there and we're excited for more to come. That's just the start. And we have so many races lined up this year and so many great things lined up this year. So you're at New York, which is basically as close to sea level as you can get to coming out here and training Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. How's that tra transition been coming up here to altitude? I don't think it's been a problem to me because I was born in altitude. I was born in uh, Mount Elegon, which is probably higher than this place. But I also have lived in Italy a couple of times because you know my, most of my siblings live there, and I've spent more time there. Of course, training-wise, it's different. Was, uh, the first month, you know, you know, the first few weeks were tough, but not really like compared to other people who have just live the sea level of their lives. So I feel like it's a, you know, a working progress, but I still think I was in a better starting point than you know, everyone else. Yeah, it looks like we got a pretty tough workout today. How often do you do hills? Oh, I don't do that often, probably once a month or once in a while, uh, but uh, it's always tough. Hills are always tough, but I think this is my third hill workout since I came here. So in three months, this is my third uh, hill workout. All right, let's get to the workout. Uh, thank you. We're here with Ben Rosario at Lake Mary. How's it going, Ben? Oh, it's good, good day. Beautiful day, actually. So, how long have you been coaching NSZ? Did you form it, or how did you start coaching? Yeah, here? so we, my wife and I, founded the group in January of 2014, and we had eight athletes that that, uh, or eight or nine athletes right there at the beginning, and um, signed on with Hoka as our title sponsor a year later in 15, and you know we're on our third contract with them now. That'll take us all the way through the Paris Olympics, and it's just grown and grown and grown. Uh, you also have a few books out. What kind of made you write those? Well, I've always enjoyed writing. I was a journalism major in college. I wrote my first book, Tradition Class Pride, with my high school coach. And the thinking there was, hey, let's kind of give high school coaches a blueprint on how to build a program. Uh, of course, we have some nuts and bolts stuff in there as well, training stuff, but uh, it's really about getting the parents to buy in, getting the kids to buy in, how to make it fun, how to, um, how to establish a winning culture, all of those type of things. So that was a really fun book to write. Uh, the second book was Inside a Marathon with Scott Fauble, and we just sort of wrote a diary type training log, uh, kind of back and forth sort of deal where he, he wrote his 
half of the chapter and I wrote my half and we didn't even see each other's writing uh, all along the way. He just wrote what he was feeling and I wrote what, what I was feeling throughout a training segment as he got ready for the New York City Marathon in 2018. And that book turned out really well and then we wrote an extra chapter after he finished seventh at the Boston Marathon the next spring. And so uh, the, the, the edition of the book that's out now has that New York City Marathon build and then just one really detailed chapter about the Boston build as well. And then the latest book is uh, Run Like a Pro Even If You're Slow, which I wrote with Matt Fitzgerald. And that's, that's really a how-to for uh, runners of all ability levels essentially how to mimic the pros. Not not the same paces and volume, of course, but just how they live their lives, the little things, nutrition, recovery, why, why pacing is so important, why balancing your intensity is so important. And uh, that's the latest book, and we're really proud of that one. This sounds good. So who we got working out today, and what's he doing? So we're watching Alex Masai work out today. Alex is our rookie, and he is training for... A number of races really the next one is the cooper river bridge run next weekend so it's nine day or i guess eight days away now in charleston south carolina his first big road race um where he'll definitely try to go for the win it's it's a good field but he'll he'll give it a go uh, and then he'll have the national championships in kenya on the track for 10,000 meters a month later so he'll, he'll do this race and then a few days later he'll he'll uh, fly to kenya and get ready for his national meet but the the the, the workout today is a hard two mile tempo he'll run 440 pace here at 7,000 feet which is not easy uh, for two miles and then he'll have a five minute break and then he'll run four by two minutes really hard up a <laughs> very steep hill it's a workout we've done many times with almost every athlete on our team we call it the Marshall Lake workout because uh, the, the hill heads up to Marshall Lake and you'll see uh, when we're out there but there's a there's a guardrail that's really hard to get to uh, but if you get to that you had a really good workout and so we'll see if you can get all the way up there what's the kind of objective behind this workout well, if you think about it physiologically, of course, we know what a tempo run does, right? It's, it's, a, it's a high end lactate threshold uh, session, that, that portion of the workout. And then the hard two minute hills from, from a heart rate perspective, you're, you're, it's really akin to running four really hard 800s is kind of how the, or six to 800 meters, right? So it's sort of a track workout on the roads. And I just think that hills, you get more bang for your buck, and, and it's a mental challenge as well as a physical challenge. But uh, yeah, if this were on the track, he'd be doing a hard two mile tempo and then four really hard 800s, you know, in that two minute to 205 kind of range. Nice. So he's been with NAZ about seven to eight months now. How did him joining kind of transform and your all's relationship start? Uh, we loved Alex. Uh, last spring when we were watching him race uh, we saw him race at the national championships in cross country in March then we saw him run on the track we really liked how he looked at the regional meet he won that 10,000 very handily in the heat and humidity in Jacksonville and then he got sixth at the 10,000 in the um, at the national championships but ran 27 45 and we just thought he was super talented and a really nice kid you know when we, we, when, we when we talked to him on zoom I just fell in love with him I thought he was great um, his coach had nothing but glowing things to say about him. I, I actually uh, went over to their Airbnb after the national championships in Eugene and hung out with Alex and with Vince Giambanco, his coach from Hofstra, and we just had a great time and hit it off. And I felt like he would fit in with the culture. And then, of course, I felt like he would be amazing uh, from a performance standpoint, and, and that's certainly been the case. He came out here and right away he set our indoor record for th or set our 3,000 meter record, set our 5,000 meter record. Would have set our 10,000 meter record, but he fell uh, at the 10 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and he's kind of been a man on a mission ever since then. I think uh, his training has been through the roof. Stuff I've never seen actually before from, from anybody on our team. So really exciting. Yeah, what's the kind of future look like once he gets back from the Kenya race? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what he does there. If he finishes high enough at nationals, he'll get an invite to run in the Kenyan trials. So they have a two-step system actually a three-step system, regionals, nationals, and then the trials. But the trials will be at the end of June, and those will be trials for the World Championship and Commonwealth Games teams. And so ideally, we're just going to prepare for those, uh, or for that race, the trials, when he gets back here and uh, send him back over to Kenya again in, in, in June. Do you see him being more of a road racer for you all, or just stay on the track more? Oh, both, you know. there's no, there's no, It's not an either-or scenario for us. Never has been. Uh, I think... The idea of going and, and honing your racing skills on the roads, 
and then coming back to the track and using those skills on the track is exactly what he'll be able to do uh, in a way this season is a microcosm of I think what he's going to be which is a versatile athlete that competes at a variety of distances and uh, competes to win. All right well I appreciate you having us out here today. Thanks. What shoes are you doing the workout in? Uh, doing the uh, uh, Rocket X. Rocket X? Yes. How do you like training in Hoka coming from Nike? Oh, it's, it's been a good journey. Like, oh, of course, as, oh, it has helped me to keep, you know, healthy. And I think the big uh, the big advantage of the Hoka shoes are more cushion. And uh, yeah, it's been nice time for me the last seven, eight months. I've been able to keep healthy and so many options, you know, now like I get shoes for free and uh, I, you know, I get to run in this every day, uh, different type of shoes, uh, probably 300 miles maximum, 200 sometimes, I just yeah. uh, change shoes, so it's been a nice journey. You have your first road race coming up, you looking forward to getting on the roads? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's it's been a good uh, like build up to this and I think uh, the roads are always nice, it's nothing to do with who is faster, it's about like, who is having a good day and who is you know, taking things in their own hands and I think I have a big shot of going and do great things here and uh, for the start I think um, I saw the lineup and I respect all those guys but I think uh, I'm gonna give them competition. When's the last time you did a road race? Oh, actually I've never done a like official road race. Uh, only in 2019 I was uh, in college still and uh, it's not so much in Buffalo, New York and they moved out cross country on the road. So that's the only experience I have from but uh, it's not really a road race but they, we just did a road uh, 10k on the road instead so I think it's kind of similar stuff. But I've never done an official road race before. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. It looks. Nice. Okay, so 440s, 545. <laughs> Nice job, Alex. Let's pick up the second mile a little bit here. This one is 445. Yeah. I didn't guide my breathing no more, so. Yeah. Yeah. So the hill starts there, so you just have to jog that way okay. and turn right. And oh, then we'll yeah. show you where, where you start. Well, you can't breathe anyway on these hills, so it won't matter. Okay. <laughs> it's like, do you have a cold or do you just have allergies? It's hard to say. It's hard to say, that's the thing. It's like with Alex, oh, I didn't, you know, I feel blocked up. It's like, well, hopefully it's just allergies. It's Patrick. But I don't, you know, because you just train through allergies. But if it's a cold, yeah. you know, then we don't want you going too hard. I don't, I don't know. It just seems like everybody's got allergies right now. Yeah. And of course, then you got COVID hanging over too. You don't want it to be that. The start is the sign. Is this his first time running this hill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How often do y'all do hills? 
Pretty often. I love hills. I love hills. One minute. Here it is. <laughs> So remember what Tyler told you, be careful on the first hill. Mm -hmm. Just kind of learn it, and okay. then we'll try to get farther each time. I'll set a cone down up there where you get, okay. and try to just keep beating the cone. Show them how it's done, Alex. <laughs> oh. Ray, do you know how long my break uh, is supposed to be? Yeah, you got two more minutes. Okay. You go two minutes up, get in the car, I'll drive you back down. You get three minutes rest total. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Yes. That was good. That was a good spot. So you see where that guardrail is? Yeah. That's like the hard thing to get to. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just keep keep moving past so, that cone, closer okay. to that guardrail. Okay. And we'll try to get past that on the fourth one. Okay. That was really good though. That was perfect for the first one. Try to maintain, you know. Yeah. Keep my shape. Keep, you know. Oh yeah, it was really yeah. really good. Ray, you did good on that first one. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> perfect spot. All right, ready? Perfect. We get that heart rate real high on hills. All right. That is for sure. Feels like it's beating out of your chest. <laughs> so far, so good, Alex. All right. Getting off tight. Sorry. Yeah. When was the last time you did hills? Ah. Uh. I don't remember, Coach. Can you remember exactly what was the last oh, time? Oh, Sedona? Sedona was Sedona. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here yeah, and there we do only hill sprints, like, you know, no doubles, but like main hills is probably January or something. Yeah. End of January or something. Before you ran that 3000. Yeah. Sure. How you doing? Uh, you come to watch the pay. I know. Brutal. All right, you ready? Here we go. Let's go, Alex. Yep. I, and I could just feel in the air. Yeah, his tempo was wasn't so great. I mean, yeah. I mean for him, <laughs> a little bit of head headwind, but yeah. like not. not That's terrible. what we were thinking. Yeah. yeah, it was like 9:30 something. Okay. Uh, maybe 9:38 or something. But um, he's looking good on these. He got farther on the second one. This is number three. Okay. The guardrail is a possibility. Pretty driven individual. Most distance runners are, but he likes the pain. You know, he can handle it. 20 seconds. Let's hit it. there anyway so <laughs> how many more is there um one more one more we'll, we'll get to the guardrail yeah that's the plan that is the plan <laughs> get upside oh i feel like they oh like my nostrils open a little bit more okay like the uh the first hill probably opened it like yeah 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 so like i remember the start of fast speed. mile yeah i was opening my mouth if you saw because you know stuff but I think it's presumed on. Yeah, I'm gonna more. send out an email today with some strategies for allergies. Yeah. Uh, because
because I think all you guys are dealing with it. But I'm glad to hear that uh, you're opening it up. Yeah, it's, you know, I think it takes a while to get it off anyway, but uh, yeah. let's keep doing it, but stop. Ah. Here we go. Number three was the success, Ray. Pacemaker now. <laughs> yeah, there you go, catch her. All right. Hop, hop. All right, Alex. Quick feet driving forward. Seconds to go. Let's get there. Hey boy. Good work. Smash it. Good, 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 excellent. Nice work. Beautiful. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's a good workout. <laughs> That's power. Yeah, thank you. Hey, you look better than you did in Sedona. Uh, really? Oh, thank you, thank you. Power is coming along. Good, yeah, yeah, really good. Remember how in Sedona on that fourth one, you yeah. kind of hit the wall. I was trying to tight body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. looked good. That uh -huh. looked real good. Oh man, I feel good about you over that last K next week. Yeah, that's like I envision every time you come to Sila, like probably this is gonna be the burnout on the last, you know, two mile or one mile or one K, whatever it is. Yep. It's just getting after it goes. There's no time, you're just gonna chase people sometimes. Yeah. Or they're gonna let them chase you, so. Yeah. It's kind of that vision I hear, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna do. It's like you're chasing a ghost, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, it's really that's good. That's what I was trying to do. Really good. Yeah. What did you think after number one? Did you think you'd get this far? Oh, not this far, but I think number one was probably. I, because that's just why we talked to Ty yesterday and you and. Yeah. I was like, probably at least. I don't wanna do, you know, positive plays on a negative, so. Yeah. So that's why I was like, probably not number after number two, probably. Yeah. I started questioning myself about. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, all right, just keep going. <laughs> Hills will always feel like tough, but if you get after them, yeah, there's nothing you know to lose. Okay, killer. Yeah, I yeah. think you were what, like right around here or so. Oh okay, yeah, for yeah, yeah, for the, for like middle of gear. Right, yeah, right, around yeah. this. Too. All right, I'm taking a picture. Okay, okay I gotta show Tyler. <laughs> yeah, let me just choose this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Uh, Great. I'll just jog down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Meet up with them. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Walk. Just start walking. Don't jog too much. It's so steep, you know. Yeah, that's true. Just jog really. Oh, uh, thank you. It's just negative, negative, negative about a work like this, uh, a workout like this, a, a positive. Um, mindset that the, the mindset of a champion. They're they're thinking exactly the opposite. They're like, this is exactly what I need, you know. I just, I can't emphasize enough how much mindset makes a difference. You know, you get done with that first one and you're feeling sorry for yourself, you got no chance at this workout. You get done with that first one and you start thinking about how much farther I'm gonna go next time, how much farther I'm gonna go next time, that's a champion. Yeah, like this type of workout, having that go a little bit further each time definitely helps. Oh it. yeah, it's old school, you know, there's a place for that. We get so hooked on these effing times and splits. Let's just run up a hill as hard as we can, you know? Gosh, there's a place for that in training for sure. Because at the end of the race, <laughs> that's all it is. You know, it's running as hard as you can. Just like being on the playground when you're in fifth grade, you know, and racing somebody to the fence and back. There's, that's, that's, what, that's what racing is. Um, so I hope that a uh, workout like this can give him a lot of confidence because he got tough out there. He got real tough out there, especially after he didn't feel so good on the two mile. To come back and crush these hills was really impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. So like post workout, like he did go a little bit slower on the hills, but or he went a on little the slower part. on the two mile. But. Yeah. Oh, but he crushed the hills. But the two mile was still nice and hard. I mean, it it was fine. It, he had a little headwind. You know, allergies were bothering him. I, I didn't mind it. It was it was totally fine. Still fast to run 4:45 pace on or 4:50 pace or whatever on the tempo. 
He blocked up on the two mile, but then after the first hill, he kind of opened up and yeah. then he felt much better and, and uh, he just got, I don't know, what would you say, like 15 meters farther each time? Yeah. Until the last one, they really Easy, crushed yeah. the last one. Yeah. Yeah, he was way far up the guardrail. So. That's definitely the goal. Get oh, hit the guardrail only on the fourth one. I think so. I mean, I've seen people go too hard on the first one, and then yeah. it's a struggle, and they like maybe they get to where they were. But I want to get farther each one because I I want that like he just crushed that last one. It's so cool. Yeah, he executed that like perfectly. Oh yeah, he's really a student of it. You know, he he just yeah, he's dynamite on that. All right, post workout. Were you pleased with that work today? Very pleased. Very pleased. That one was impressive. Um, he, there's a lot of allergies in the air right now in Flagstaff. It's that time of year, and so he felt a little blocked up on the two mile, but he still ran 445, 452 for the for the um, two splits there, and uh, that's still fast out on Lake Mary Road, so no big deal. And then he said after the first hill repeat, he finally kind of opened up and felt better, and you know, the whole idea there is to get farther each one, and he just did a beautiful job of that. I thought I thought he got to the right spot on the first one, clearly made an effort to get a little farther on the second one, third one, and then he knew that he was going to crush that last one, and he got he got just about as far as we've ever seen someone get on that last one, so, you know, dynamite workout. So how excited are you to, like, he still has a lot of upside, he's still oh, yeah. only in the sport about five years now. Yeah. How excited are you to have him kind of under you, the training? Oh, I'm really excited, you know, he I think he fits in very well with the type of athlete that is that has succeeded here. Um, he's very aerobically gifted. He's very um, he's very mentally tough, and he responds well to altitude. Obviously, being a, a Kenyan, he, he grew up at altitude, so this is this is natural for him. And uh, yeah, I would think that over the course of time, he'll be very good at everything from 5,000 meters all the way up to the marathon. And uh, you know, good on the track, good on the roads, really versatile, and he just has fun with it, you know? He has fun, he's smiling, he brings everybody up around him. That's what you need as a good teammate, and he's a great teammate. What's kind of the main goal for this year, long term? I mean, the main goal for him in, in, in this part of the year is to put himself in a position where he could possibly make the Kenyan team for the Commonwealth Games. I know that's a big, big ask, I know it's really hard to do, but it's not inconceivable. Um, if he wouldn't have fallen at the 10 um, a few weeks ago, I think he was on track to run maybe 27, 22, 27, 25, somewhere right in there. And he's really good at altitude. The national championships and the trials for Kenya are at altitude in Nairobi. And I mean, it's not crazy to think that he can run under 28 minutes, even at altitude. And if you can do that, you can finish in the top six or seven at the at the Kenyan uh, trials and you know they'll they'll probably pick their Commonwealth Games team it'll probably be whoever finishes fourth fifth and sixth at, at their trials because one two three will probably go to the world championships and um, yeah that's the goal as crazy as it may be that's the goal and we'll try our best and uh, uh, I, I think uh, it's about the pursuit right you know it's about all these workouts leading up to it and how fit can he get and we'll just give it a shot Will he double today? Uh, I can't remember if he has an afternoon run or not. He might. His mileage isn't terribly high right now. He was only about 80 miles in college. So we've been sticking to that 80 range, maybe sneaking up to 90, but nothing more than that. So I can't remember if he has a double or not, but um, he's he's kind of in that 80 to 90 miles a week range. He'll, he'll run a 15 mile run on Sunday. Um, he has done longer long runs, but he's got that race coming up next week. So we're just trying to back off just a hair so he can feel good at Cooper River. And then what's it like kind of taking a college straight out of, or an athlete straight out of college and like showing on the ropes for professional racing? <laughs> well, luckily for Alex, it hasn't been that hard because, you know, as I think you talked to him about, his sister was a world champion. His sister Lynette was a world champion. His brother Moses was fourth at the Olympic Games. So he comes from a family. His sister Maggie is a 222 marathoner. He comes from a family of professional athletes. So he actually... He actually knew how to conduct himself right away as, as far as uh, being a professional goes. He, he does all the little things right. He always has a you know, protein shake with him after the workout, he's drinking it in the car right as we're leaving. He just he gets his sleep. He stays in a rhythm, um, takes things very seriously. So I haven't had to teach him much. He's a, he's, he knows what he's doing. 
All right, thanks for having us out today. Oh, we loved it. Thank you. Back here post workout. How do those hills feel? <laughs> oh man, that that terrible. You know, uh, strong hills, very strong hills. But you know, at the end of the day, you know what it's doing to your body. And like you know, I'm preparing for a road race 10k in uh, Cooper River 10k. You know, next week, next Saturday. And you know, this the best way to prepare for something is to get every course absolutely right. And I think it has some hills, and that's why we're doing some hills just to get ready for our legs. So what what made you come to the U.S.? Uh, did your brothers and sisters ever come here? Or what no, 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 no. They always train in Kenya, in you know, in a ten. But I just came here because uh, college mostly, like education wise. So uh, that's how I found out about you know at least the the side of running. And uh, like once I was here, I was able to improve uh, from you know where I was before. And uh, yeah, I was able to you know attract some some you know sponsorship or, or some teams. And uh, here. That's what made me to be here. Yeah, how's training been going so far? It's been nice, it's been a good journey. You know, of course, uh, we're coming from winter and, uh, you know, it's, it's probably uh, starting of spring now and it can't get better than this. You know, you can see how excited we are, all of us, to be outside again and running, you know, doing what we love most. Yeah, well, thanks for having us out and good luck next weekend. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you for coming along and thank you.